Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and iPad OS is officially in beta. We have a new platform from Apple and I've been playing around with this beta for the past couple of days. So I thought I would give you my top 10 features for the iPad OS 13 beta. Actually, iPad OS 13, why don't we do the top 13 features currently available in iPad OS. And let's start off first with that beautiful new home screen layout. So now Apple gave us a little bit of a revision of the iPad home screen. So one of the first things you'll notice is that the apps are much smaller on the home screen than they used to be in iOS 12. Because the apps are smaller, you get a much tighter grid of apps and you can also fit more onto a single home page. Another cool thing about the iPad OS home screen is that now you can swipe over to the right to reveal the widget center. You can customize which widgets you want and then these are available all the time on your home screen and then you can swipe up and down to see all of your different widgets. While we're talking about the appearance of iPadOS, one of the things you have to appreciate is the new volume indicator. So now when you change the volume on iPadOS, no longer are you greeted with that giant square in the center of your screen blocking your content, you get a new volume HUD, which is basically a slider right next to the volume buttons. What's cool about this volume HUD is it starts off big, but as you increase or decrease volume, the HUD shrinks down to a much smaller size. Now, while we're talking about all the different appearances and fresh new changes in iPadOS, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this third feature, and that is finally the inclusion of a dark mode. So if you go into Control Center and long press on the brightness, you'll now see a new option where you can toggle either a light or dark mode. People have been requesting dark mode on iOS for quite a long time now, and this is now available on iOS 13 as well as iPad OS 13. So now when you go into different applications, they should switch automatically over to dark mode. So say if you go into settings, there is a really nice dark mode there. If you go into Safari, you can see that the top of Safari now has this nice new dark mode. And in some of the apps, it's really, really striking just how good the dark mode looks. I especially like the look and appearance of dark mode in the photos application and especially in music. I think it does a really great job of showing off dark mode. And you can just go through all of Apple's apps to see the difference in appearance when you have a light mode and a dark mode. And now users finally have the option to change that on iPadOS. While we're talking about more appearance changes, another big update to iPadOS is the new Reminders application. Now, previously, the old Reminders application is something that I've complained about previously. I really wanted a refresh. It was kind of really old looking. It had these card-based systems that, especially on an iPad with that big screen, wasn't exactly intuitive or useful. Now we have a way nicer interface to reminders with a much more streamlined experience. So you get those categories in the top left, like your today view or your scheduled view. On the right hand side, you get a much nicer list view. You also just get general improvements to the reminders app, like it should now recognize natural language. So as you're typing out today or tomorrow, you can then pick from the quick keyboard to quickly schedule those events. Another app that got a great UI refresh is the photos application. This is going to help you resurface a lot of your older photos and they have some really nice animations if you are taking any sort of live photos. The new organization of organizing your photos into either a today view, a month view, or a year view is really helpful for organizing the photos that you want to see and resurfacing some old photos that you forgot about. Overall, the new browsing experience on the Photos app is really smart and I really love the UI changes to it. It makes browsing your photos really, really nice. Another killer feature in iPadOS is now the inclusion of the full desktop Safari experience right inside iPadOS. So on previous versions of the iPad, you had a Safari that was more oriented towards the mobile side of websites and also borrowed a lot of elements from the iPhone. Now on an iPad with a bigger screen, there's no reason for the web pages to default to a mobile viewer where it thinks that you have a much smaller phone screen to look at. So now on iPad OS, you get access to basically a full version of Safari. So if you go to other websites like YouTube, you get the desktop version. You can see all of the different sidebars that you would normally see if you were using a MacBook. So any website you visit, like Apple's website, you now get the full UI of a desktop website. Site. Another great inclusion, because we're now using a full version of Safari, we also get access to the download manager like you would find on a Mac. So if you're downloading attachments or photos, now you can go over to the download manager to see what you downloaded. And overall, bringing the desktop Safari experience over to iPad just makes it feel so much more like a regular computer that it really does enhance the experience of browsing on the iPad. Another great feature on iPadOS is the enhancements made to the multitasking system. Them. 
So multitasking works a lot like it did before. So if you have another application over, you can take something from your dock and drag it over to the side to have two split screen applications. However, in previous iOS versions, you can only have one application open at a time. Now with iPadOS, you can now have two of the same application open at once. So now if you take an app like Notes or Mail, you can have two of that same app view where before you were limited to just one. Another great addition to the multitasking system is now you can do a lot more with that slide over view. When you bring an app over to slide over because it's in that smaller screen, it's almost like you're getting an iPhone UI complete with its own home bar. Now you can drag multiple applications over into that slide view and then you can quickly change them just like how you would on an iPhone 10. So if you drag along the bottom, you can quickly switch between applications. If you slide up, much like on an iPhone, you can reveal all the different applications that you currently have open. It kind of creates this small windowed system on iPad OS. Also another cool addition is if you already have the application open and then you open up your dock and press down on the same application, you'll open up an expose view of all of the different application instances that you have currently running. Now, one of the bigger changes to iPad OS is actually the inclusion of mouse support for the first time ever on an iPad. Now, mouse support isn't enabled by default, but you can go into the accessibility settings and settings. And if you go over to assistive touch and turn that on, you will get full support for a mouse. So I took my Razer gaming mouse and put it on a USB-C dongle, plugged it into my iPad Pro, and it worked just fine. It even lit up in the Razer Chroma. Now, once you do that, you can just go and use a mouse on your iPad Pro like you would do on your Mac. So you can move between the home screen, scroll in between web pages, use it for pro applications like LumaFusion. And there's definitely a strange feeling to using a mouse on your iPad. This is something that a lot of people thought they would never see, and now we finally have it. My only real gripe with the mouse support right now is that it kind of has this circle reticule, and I think I would much prefer just a regular old mouse pointer. Speaking of things that weren't previously available on the iPad, now we finally have support for external storage. So you can plug in things like a USB thumb drive, or in my case, a complete external hard drive. Once you plug in the hard drive, you'll have access to all of the files inside of the files app and it works basically like a foldered file system on Mac OS. Now you can finally utilize that USB-C port inside of your iPad Pro. This is a feature a lot of pros have been specifically asking for and now on iPad OS you have finally access to external storage. One of the other features I really liked in iPad OS was the addition of a floating keyboard. So now when you're in an app and you have a virtual keyboard, all you have to do is pinch on that virtual keyboard and it will shrink down. When it's in that floating window, you can move it to whatever position you want. Then you can quickly type on one side or you can use the new swipe method to type out messages. And if you wanna resize the keyboard back to full size, you do that same pinching motion. Now this feature is a huge enhancement in iPad OS and I didn't even know it was coming or I didn't even think it was possible for Apple to improve a hardware feature this much on the iPad. I'm of course talking about the reduced latency from the Apple Pencil. Now it's going from 20 milliseconds, which was already super speedy, all the way down to nine milliseconds. And this reduction to nine milliseconds is huge. So everything you do with that Apple Pencil is super speedy and super responsive. So say if you're writing on your iPad Pro, the digital ink appears on the screen instantly. And I mean instantly, it is something really crazy to see in real life. No matter how fast I move the Apple Pencil across the screen, I could not see any sort of latency. I was just super impressed with how much Apple was able to improve the Apple Pencil latency just through software alone. Another great feature with the Apple Pencil is the ability to mark up anything by dragging from the bottom left corner. And this is especially great in web pages because now you can get a full screenshot of that web page, and then you can scroll the entire length of that web page and mark it up with your Apple Pencil. As someone who constantly has to take notes for this channel and reference other sources, I find it a really nice addition. Now, my last feature for iPad OS is kind of both a Mac feature and an iPad feature rolled all into one, and this is, of course, Sidecar. So previously on the channel, I reviewed a device called Luna Display, which made your iPad act as a second monitor for your Mac, and this basically brings that functionality 
natively from your Mac to your iPad. Now you can use your iPad as a second screen for your Mac or bring over a Mac app and then control it on your iPad. The software is really impressive and sometimes I notice little to no latency, but this is currently in beta and when I was filming this, I was getting a lot of things wrong with the software. I think there might've been some Bluetooth interference, but for the most part, the sidecar feature worked perfectly and it doesn't require any additional hardware dongles to run like with Luna Display. So now you can run full Mac applications like Final Cut Pro 10 on your iPad. Now, there are some limitations. So like on Luna Display, you can actually use the full iPad as a touchscreen surface. With Sidecar, it looks like that's only limited to the Apple Pencil as an input method. Sidecar also lets you use the touch bar controls on the bottom of your iPad and then also has different key commands on the left of the iPad. Sidecar isn't a beta, so I am hoping to see some performance improvements as it moves along, but so far it is a pretty enjoyable experience and I'm really happy that Apple is adding this natively. So now Mac users who have iPads can now take advantage of both of those systems working together. Okay, now those are my 13 favorite features in iPadOS so far. Let me know what your favorite feature was in the comments below. And I couldn't get to all of my favorite features. There were so many to include. So if I didn't include any, also be sure to let me know in the comments below. As always, if you liked the video, make sure you give me a like if you wanna see more from my channel, including more coverage on iPadOS. Make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.